These giant people our guide referred to were the Shadowmen of the Badlands. Ranging from 7 to 9 feet in height, they must have been awe-inspiring, if not terrifying for the foreign eye. And even as I imagined them, they were the most unpleasant figment of my imagination. We were told that the ancient and legendary Bushmen of Africa hunted them with great fear and passion, because they believed that these beings were conjured by witchcraft. This was mainly because tribes of giant people commonly raided villages, by taking livestock, destroying houses, and even worse, raping women, young and old. Yahim told us that eventually, the Bushmen overwhelmed these evil beings through sheer force, outnumbering them and killing them. The corpses of giants were later burned and buried without sign or stone to commemorate their final resting place. It wasn't only these people, but also the packs of coyotes and wild boar, which Bushmen had to deal with on a daily basis. The menacing shadow men were reported to have disappeared during the 9th and 20th century, as the British had already arrived in Africa, sporting guns that the continent had been unfamiliar with. And as for me, I wasn't necessarily sure whether he was spouting myths or whether all of it was real. Up until that point, I had never heard of any race abnormally towering human beings, though my instinct had told me to be afraid. That connotated the fact that I did believe it somehow. Would you fear something that you didn't believe was true in the first place? If they were true, it was something to be scared about. These shadow men just wouldn't have been wiped out entirely. A number of them may have escaped through purging of the tribe. In that case, they may still be alive today. Being tired and all, I had enough speculation for that day. We all finished up our food, drank a bit of water, then proceeded to sleep inside the tent like a can of sardines. Our photographer took a few pictures, then set his equipment aside to save batteries. After checking the functionality of our flashlights, and Yahim preparing his FN rifle, we were all soundly asleep. The stress, as bad as it was, actually helped put our minds to rest. Thankfully, our combined body heat accumulating inside of the tent actually helped combat the five Celsius temperatures outside. I never thought it could be this wonderful sleeping in a tight space with four people I barely knew. But it helped me understand the pain everyone was going through. In a way, they had become my family. Despite that feeling, I slept with an uncertainty that haunted me persistently. As a believer of cryptids, the Badlands was something of a big deal to me. I could not get anywhere near sleep. Even as the night dragged on for what seemed like forever, I looked at my watch seeing its ethereal glow in the darkness. 11.42pm. Nothing could have prepared me for what was going to happen next. At around 2.31am, at which point I was still wide awake, the cricket stopped making noise. I made out what may have been faint footsteps on the grass outside, like weak thuds on the soil, followed by short rustles of grass. Fear overtook me as I tried to nudge Akeem to try to wake him up. If there was anything outside of the tent like that without having warned us, it was probably an animal. Or it was something else very hostile. My second nudge woke Yahim up, as he raised up his head slightly. I could tell that he'd also noticed the noises coming from outside as his brows furrowed. He softly palmed the fowl as he sat up, turning its safety off with a soft click. We both hoped it wasn't too audible for whatever was outside. Now... Because the rustling thuds were quite quick, I immediately thought it was a four-legged animal. Mostly coyote. If there had been snorting, I would have thought it was a boar. These are common areas in Africa as I'd been informed. Then there was a snort. Several snorts followed. Ah, wild boar foraging, I thought to myself. Somehow relieved. Boars wouldn't normally be dangerous if you just let them pass by, though they were notorious for stealing food and crops. Nevertheless, Yahim was keen on observing external movement, ready to fire at any moment. A bead of sweat trickled down his face, his eyes widened as his eyes adjusted to the darkness inside the tent. I wondered, though, how could a pack of boar be out at this time, when the temperatures would be downright freezing? It was rather strange. Yahim himself seemed to be in a state of observance. He must have been thinking the same thing, too. By that time, every one of us had woken up inside the tent although barely moving. The rustling sound of grass had intensified, and sounded awfully near the tent. 
hooves thudding against the ground so close you could feel the thumps underneath our beds. It had become more intense as though the animals had started trotting, then gradually faded off into the distance, although still had the same fast pace of thudding against the ground. Why had they done that? I thought once more. Everything became terrifyingly quiet as we remained alert in our surroundings. I thought for sure that the white noise was going to make my ears bleed.